Good evening. Welcome to Wild Wednesday. We're at on Wednesday. I'm excited. I'm blessed and delighted that you have decided to be with us this evening. Have an exciting word, encouraging word. I want to talk about our covenant with God. I believe it'll bless you. And talk about the strength of that supernatural covenant that we have with God, a, a covenant that will, will lead to favor, success, increase, peace. Oh, we all need that today. Uh, I believe God put this on my heart to share with you a word in season. Uh, and I don't want you to miss a word this, this, this evening that I'm sharing. I believe it will encourage you. We're, we're living in critical times. And that goes without saying. The year 2020 has been such a challenging year for so many. People have been in crisis and our nation as well. But we serve an awesome God, a God who is faithful. And we may have been looking at the problem but this evening, I want you to draw your attention to the promise. I believe there's something in the promise of God's word that will enhance your spirituality, that will increase you, that will give you the joy and certainly the peace that you need in this hour. Yes, 2020 will go down in history of this country as an unforgettable year and around the world as well. But you ought to, it ought to also be a year where you see your turnaround and your breakthrough and you have grown closer to the Lord than ever before. He's still leading, he's still guiding, he's still directing. Now, our lives have been radically uh, changed from the norm that we uh, have been accustomed to. But we are praying, and I'm praying, I'm praying that the Lord, that his grace will position you and that his peace will guide you. I'm praying that there will be no more sickness, no lack, no more lack, no more isolation, that you will be insulated and comforted by the word of God. And I believe it's also important that we pray no more pandemic, no more fear and heartbreak. Many have lost loved ones and they need to be consoled. They need to know that they are not alone, that God is still with them. And we're believing that God will send laborers across their path and they will be able to hold them up and, and, and encourage them in the faith. Now, I want to agree with you and pull our faith together for a supernatural turnaround, a supernatural increase for the remainder of this year. I believe your victory and success is on its way. I believe it will be delivered to you by special delivery <laughs> because you are in a covenant relationship with the Lord that guarantees 
your place of honor at the king's table. Amen. At the king's table. Many Christians today see themselves as poor and 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 and, and impoverished, lacking enough to survive and and to thrive. They all they need to so to thrive, but they're just surviving. They want to be in a position to give to others, Amen. but because of their lack, mm. they don't know what to do. I want to tell you, and want to share with you, you don't have to sell them for, uh, for less, or when you can have God's best. Is by special delivery. You've received a royal invitation to sit and feast at the king's table. Mm -hmm. King of kings, Lord of lords, Prince of peace. It has arrived by way of special delivery. When you discover your heritage in the covenant with Christ. It changes things. Now let me share, get your Bibles please. Get, your, get, get the Word of God out and highlight things that uh, you may need to go back and reference at some point. Uh, just like uh, the covenant between David and Jonathan found in the Old Testament a passage of scripture 1 Samuel the 20th chapter verse 42 it's a covenant between David the reference here is a covenant between David and Jonathan uh Jonathan, of course, was the son of David's most deadly and dreaded enemy, Saul. But there is a passage of scripture that I want to read. It says, and I believe it was an ordained setup and, and, and covenant. Go in peace. Since the two of us swore in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord will be between me and you, and between my descendants and your descendants forever. Now here's the key. Jonathan and David were not only in covenant with, with each other, they became the heads of their household, representing their descendants for generations to come. Now, I will have you to know that you and I, we are under Christ's covenant. And Jesus is the covenant head of the human race. And the Father made a covenant with Jesus that involves not only him, but all those who believe in him as savior. Now a covenant, uh, Webster's uh, uh, definition of a covenant is a binding agreement made by two or more uh, individuals or parties to do or keep from doing a specified thing, a compact. Now, if you reference law, in law, it's a sealed contract. In theology now, it's the promises made by God to man, mm -hmm. received in the Bible. And that's where we want to go this evening whatever struggles you are facing whatever you're dealing with i want to declare 
And I want you to know, you can be free. You can be free. You don't have to live with the fear of financial lack and the bondage of debt and sickness in your body and hurtful family problems. You can be free. Now let's get back to this, this um, illustration. Jesus is in covenant with God and we are joint heirs with him. He's our elder brother. You are as much a part of that same covenant Jesus made with God the Father as Jesus. Every blessing to which Jesus is entitled to, entitled you, he was entitled to, you are entitled to. Each one comes to you through Christ. In Christ Jesus, we have the victory. But there's something you have to do, uh, which includes resurrection, healing, abundance, and more. Revelations 12, 11, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. You have to start declaring who you are and what you have, even in the face of adverse circumstances and difficulties. Now, Jonathan and David, when they parted, because Jonathan's father, Saul, was David's enemy, but Jonathan and Saul both were slain in battle. And there's something interesting about this. In those days, because Saul was such an enemy to David, who was a, the anointed king, the tradition would have been for David to kill all of Saul's remaining family. But instead, he honored his covenant with his friend Jonathan. And Jonathan, although dead, but the covenant is still in place. Oh, I hope you got that. Jonathan deceased, but the covenant is still in force. Now, at one point in David's life after um, settling to, settling in, being king, he thought to check and see if there were any of Jonathan's descendants still left. And he searched and found the one surviving son of Jonathan. He's the last of Saul's house, Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth, like so many of us, and we know about sheltering because we've experienced that this year. Mephibosheth was sheltering in place in a place called Lodibar. Lodibar. Lodibar is no place for someone of royalty, Amen. someone of, uh, of kingship. Amen. It's no place. It was no place where your life is. You're just surviving. You can't feast when they're, they're crumbs. <laughs> you know, he's just getting by. He's just getting by. But his life is about to change. His life is about to change. I believe something is getting ready to happen in your life as well. Uh, when you look at the name Mephibosheth, the name means shameful one. Mephibosheth 
was crippled by an injury. No fault of his own. His nurse dropped him trying to escape. She knew the tradition. As he was a new king coming in place and it injured him for life. And some of us have been wounded and injured in life from childhood. But that's that you can live and rise above it. He was living in a place called Lodibar. And Lodibar literally means no pastor, uh, no provision, no peace. Crippled from youth, living in a place where there's no provision, no peace, living in fear, sheltering in place, hiding out, trying to stay undercover, underground. There are times when many of us have felt that way, where we've been and some of us where we've been for the past few few months, sheltering in place with a global pandemic, civil unrest, economic downturn just to name a few. Dealing with a serious issue with the coronavirus, COVID-19. Now, Jonathan's son, Mephibosheth, He's not the only one that is sheltered in place. There was a woman with an issue of blood who sheltered in place for 12 years because she was considered unclean. She had done everything she possibly could do to receive a healing, but the physicians could not help her. She only grew worse, but one day changed her whole life when she heard about Jesus. And when she heard about Jesus, she got in the press and pressed her way through the crowd. Wasn't supposed to be there. Tradition said that uh, tradition was against her. That whole system, that culture was against her being in that crowd because she was unclean according to law. But she got in the press and made a conscious decision when she heard about Jesus that she wouldn't stop, wouldn't quit until she touched the hem of his garment there are times when you have to be tenacious. Mm. Like, I mean, pit bull type faith. Where you, when you grab a hold and hold on, you're not going to let go until your life is changed. Until your situation is changed. Determined to touch Jesus. And that's exactly what she did. Now, I want you to notice something. He said, daughter, and that's in Mark's gospel, the fifth chapter. He said, daughter, thy faith has made thee whole. First, he had her to identify herself. Somebody touch me. And that's, that's what we need to do this evening. Somebody need to touch Jesus this evening. Somebody need to hear him in this message this evening and touch Jesus. Press through. Press through your doubts. Press through your fears. Press through your uncertainties. Press through your, your, your fears 
until you touch Jesus. Some things you have to do afraid. And she was afraid. But some things you have to do afraid. I heard my sister Joyce Myers talk about that. Some things you have to do afraid. You are about to discover, like my fever chef, that your life is about to change because of divine favor, divine favor, divine favor, divine favor. You see, as a born again believer, in the sacrifice of Christ for your sins, for you are now under a covenant of divine favor. It was negotiated between the Lord and Jesus and the Heavenly Father. And by biblical standards and terms of this covenant, you are empowered by the grace of God to have peace, joy, prosperity, and no more <laughs> just getting by. Every, every blessing, every blessing comes through Christ and you are a joint heir with him in all blessings. That's Romans 8, Romans chapter 8, verse 17. I'd highlight that and I'd meditate on that. Oh my God, I'd meditate on that. Jonathan and David entered into agreement and an agreement. I'm not sure Mephibosheth was aware that he was in covenant relationship with the king. Because if he did, I, I, I believe he would have not been in Lodibar, a place of desperation, a place of isolation, a place where he didn't know the favor of the king. The divine favor of God will locate you. Even if you're in Lodibar, even if you're in a place that you don't perceive you could escape, the favor of God will locate you. And that's exactly what happened with Mephibosheth. The favor of God located him. What seemed like Lodibar to you is the place where the Savior's covenant with God the Father is covering you. Where you've been isolated, insulation is getting ready to, to take place. Guaranteeing every blessing, every blessing in Christ that you need and so desire is getting ready to happen. The Savior's covenant with, uh, with, with, with God, the blessing poured out on Mephibosheth are the ones that you and I can receive because of our covenant of Christ. The covenant blessings of Christ. The very first thing that David said to Mephibosheth, and you have to get ready. You have to get ready to come out of Lodibar because you've received an invitation this evening that you can't live in Lodibar any longer. You need to get ready. Leave those naysayers, those who will question whether you can ever get out of Lodibar. Leave all the doubters, leave them behind. You, you, there are some things and some places that you can't take everybody with you. 
They'll ruin it and they'll spoil it for you. Mephibosheth, he's frightened. The king sends an invitation or uh, 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 an invitation for him to come out of Lodibar. And, and the first thing he, the, king, the king wants him to know is fear not. Because divine, divine favor has located and, and it will not only locate you, it will reposition you which was getting ready to take place in Mephibosheth's life. King David gave him a place at his, at his own table. He's putting Mephibosheth in a raw position, in a position where he, at the, the king's table, although he's crippled now, but when he's sitting at the king's table in the presence of royalty, he appears royal himself. He's covered at the king's table. You don't see his crippleness. You may know about it, but you don't see it because he's covered at the king's table. He's been just getting by. Maybe not uh, enough, with enough, but now he has more than enough. Amen. And that's what God is getting ready to do on your behalf. Amen. When you understand who you are, when divine favor locates you, locates you. Romans chapter 9 verse 26 is God's promise to take so-called nobodies and transform them, change their lives in, in, into somebodies in Christ. I am somebody in Christ. Amen. In the place where it said to them, you are not my people, there, there they shall be called sons of the living God. The word from the Lord that I'm sharing with you this evening is to put a footstop, an end to your wondering. God loves you. Has awesome plans for you. Plans to change everything. <laughs> See now, coming out of loaded bar, you, you got to change your mindset also. You can't keep that 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 mindset of a, a, a limitation when you're sitting at the king's table. Amen. When there's plenty before you being offered to you. Subsisting on crumbs, now you're feasting on more than enough. I mean, the Lord wants to open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't even have room enough to contain. It's going to run down, rain down on you. The grandson of King Saul, Mephibosheth, crippled at one point in despair, in poverty, did not and were not aware of his covenant relationship with King David because of his father, Jonathan. He was reduced from hopelessness and given the blessings of a king's son. Now, that'll produce peace. <laughs> that'll produce peace. A covenant with God is life-changing. It's life-changing forever. 
dramatic transformation, life rearranging. It's a turnaround. God wants to ambush you with blessings this evening. Blessings that will overcome all of the pain of your past. You being crippled by somebody wounding and injuring you in the past. Oh my God. Let me declare this evening that your turnaround is about to take place. You're receiving a royal invitation to sit at the king's table. No more, no more crumbs. No more just getting by. No more not enough. You're being repositioned to a place of more, more than enough. I, I won't you to know as we stand in agreement that the favor of God, the favor of God comes without fear or dread. Get ready. I said get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Life for you is about to change. Like Mephibosheth, when he was sitting at the king's table, the blessings that he received, one peace, and that's what favor will do. Favor will pr produce peace in your life. But fear not. He will position you. King David gave him a place at his own table. He was given a raw position. His life is changed forever. And because of the favor between Jonathan and King David, Mephibosheth's father, the favor that David and Jonathan had with each other is now bestowed to the son Mephibosheth. No more living in poverty. And then David, David did something. David gave him all the lands and property and wealth that had belonged to his grandfather. <laughs> and then something else takes place when the favor of God, with the favor that's bestowed on Mephibosheth, which is the favor that you and I have. David promised Mephibosheth that he would eat bread at the king's table continually. That's Second Samuel, the ninth chapter, verse seven. The gift that we have received and the favor that we have received is, um, is everlasting. Do you hear me? It's everlasting. It's everlasting. It's everlasting. Uh, Your gifts in Christ are everlasting too. The blessings, the same blessings that were poured out on Mephibosheth are the same ones you receive because of the covenant of Christ. You and I are now eligible to receive all the blessings guaranteed
to Mephibosheth because you are under a covenant. You are under a covenant of his divine favor. I want to declare with you, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Provision, more than enough for everything that you need for my God shall supply my all my need or needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus covenant now listen because of that covenant as a believer as a covenant believer you are a supernatural born winner. Now you are a winner, stop whining. Choose to believe the favor that God is bestowing upon you, has bestowed upon you. Because of that covenant, you and I have on the inside of us the God kind of faith that created the universe, the whole universe. Because of that covenant, because God is your father, because God is our father, you and I have his life on the inside of us. We have victory over sin and death. Sin and the devil. Because of that covenant, God is light. And although this world lies in darkness, it's light where you and I are. Because the Spirit of God is in us. You know, greater is He. Greater, greater is He that's in us than He that's in and out of the world. In other words, there's enough light. You may be experiencing a dark moment, a severe trial, but there's enough light in you. To receive the direction, to go in the right direction. One of the things that I want to encourage you to do this evening is keep your focus on the Lord. Regardless of what's going on around you, don't lose your focus. Don't lose your focus. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I just want to go back to this little woman with the issue of blood. I love that story. Sheltering in place, like Mephibosheth, different reasons, different circumstances. But can you imagine? Here she is, she's weak. Life just ebbing away. When she got in that press, determined to, to touch Jesus, to touch the hem of his garment, she had to stay focused. And you, you're going to have to stay focused this evening. I want to encourage you. Now you take your eyes off of COVID-19 and put your eyes on the Lord. You take your eyes off of vaccine and, and vaccine your heart. Do you hear me? Let your heart be vaccinated. And you keep your focus. And you trust God. God promised. It's a covenant promise. Never to leave you. Nor forsake you. To always be with you. To have ministering angels encamp about you. Go back. Go back. And, and, and look at Psalm 91. And you take your shelter. And you shelter in place. 
and you find shelter in the Lord. Do you hear what I'm saying? Do you hear me this evening? You ought to say amen. amen. <laughs> you shelter in place in God, in Christ Jesus, you have the victory. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You need to start declaring it. <laughs> You've been invited to the king's table where there's plenty. There's provision, there's security, there's more than enough. <laughs> A place where you're covered. Listen, <laughs> at the king's table, the Lord prepares the table before me in the presence of my enemies. He anointeth my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Double amen. Triple amen. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement. This is your day for special delivery. For special delivery of a transforming, life-altering word sent from the king. You've been invited now. You've been invited. When you're at the table, the king's table, you may have been wounded in the past. You may have been crippled in the past. But at the king's table, nobody sees your crippleness. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nobody sees Amen. your feeble condition. Amen. Lord Jesus. Oh my God. Mm. Oh, pull up a seat. <laughs> You've been invited mm. to the king's table to appear before the raw presence of Almighty God, where there's plenty, no lack, where there's peace, where there's joy, where there's security. Now this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice, and I'm encouraging you to rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day. You are have a covenant. God has promised to provide and take care of you. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, I'm comforted because I know the good shepherd. Mm. Oh. Oh. Oh my God. Mm. He's watching over you. He's watching over you and yours. Mm. And you get ready to be repositioned. You get ready to respond to the royal invitation to come on up out of Lodibar, a place where no king's kid should be. Amen. No child of God should be. Amen. Come on up out of a Lodibar attitude, a Lodibar mentality. Come on up. Jesus. Come on out. Stop complaining and start rejoicing. You received a royal invitation this evening. An invitation to come on out. Now, 
Just as God created this vast universe by faith, you can create your world by believing and speaking His word over your life. Change how you talk. Is all it'll always be like this here. Now, I, now there's one thing that I thought about, and I never thought about this before, and I just want to share with you. Uh, I wonder what those individuals said <laughs> when my favorite chef left Loaded Bar. Where does he think he's going? I bet you the king is getting ready to to take care of his enemies. He's getting ready. He thought he could <laughs> escape the wrath of the king, but that's it. I bet you they had all kinds of things on their mind because that's the way people think in Lodi Bar. Amen. They don't think success. They don't think that there's something good some in a special delivery. They have a negative attitude. The mentalities have been warped by Lodi Bar. Sometimes you got to distance yourself from Lodi Bar thinking in order to receive what God has in store for you. And here, Mephibosheth, he's leaving fearful. But the king said, and what is the Lord always saying to us? Fear not. For I am with you. So if you fear not, then you can be encouraged this evening. You got to trust him. You got to trust the king. That has sent for you. He's inviting you to come on up out of Lodi Bar. And, I, and, and, and I'm declaring and decreeing you coming out of Lodi Bar this, this evening. Your attitude is coming out of Lodi Bar. You're snatching you out of Lodi Bar. Mm -hmm. You weren't designed to carry that kind of weight, that kind of pressure. That's right. That's right. Mm -mm. No way. No way. If you're going to shelter, shelter and dwell with the Lord who puts a covering, a canopy of security. Day and night watchman. Got you in the day, got you in the night. Oh my God. Got you when you get up, got you when you lie down. Oh, supernatural intervention. Do you know something? If the king had not sent, if King David had not sent for loaded, sent for, for Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth would have still been in loaded bar. Now the king is requested for an, you to have an audience with him. Find yourself reading and looking, checking out your covenant. in Christ and that'll help you when any crisis comes when any challenge comes you know that with God all things are possible you're going to keep on believing you're steady you're steady because when you've done all to stand you know to continue to stand because with God he'll make a way out of no way listen why don't you declare this evening? Lord, I don't know what you have in store for me, but I know your plans are good. Mm. Be it unto me according to thy word this evening. Mm. Be it unto me. Father, today I choose to leave Lodabar and those who would try to keep me in Lodabar to leave them behind. Amen. I believe your promises. I believe the promises the promise of your word. And I confess that with you all 
all things are possible. Now, someone, have, I now hear you, someone saying, I, 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 can't, I can't shake this. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Come on, say it. With God, all things are possible. You can come out of Lodibar this evening and declare, I'm coming out of Lodibar. I will not live like this. I've lived like this long enough. In the face of all that you're going through, declare, I believe that your word is greater than any circumstance. I believe your promise and you're faithful to your promise in spite of the problem that I'm dealing with. And as I focus on your truth, I will overcome because of your promises to me. I will overcome the problem because of the promise. I trust you, Lord. Come on, say it. I trust you, Lord. I trust you to give me the faith and wisdom and patience that I need to see your promises come to pass in every area of my life. Lord, be it unto me according to your word. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you don't know Jesus Christ and you need the wisdom of God in your life, you need the joy of God in your life. And you can have it this evening. You need the peace of God in your life. Man can't do that. You can't do that. Now I've discovered and I've, I, I, I mean, and I want to pray a prayer with you and I encourage you to pray this prayer. This Christian life that I'm talking about can only be lived when you allow Christ in and you allow him to live this Christian life through you. It's not you trying to be good mm-hmm. or you having been bad. Mm-hmm. It's you acknowledging Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in the pardon of your sins. So pray this prayer with me. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for my sin, my transgressions. I want to have a turnaround in my life. I want to first turn around from sin. Please forgive me. I believe Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he died on the cross for my sin and and you raised him to life on my behalf. I want him, Jesus Christ, by way of invitation to come into my heart. I invite him to come into my heart and take control of my life. Live this Christian life through me. I want to trust him as my savior and follow him as my Lord from this day forward. In his Righteous, holy name I pray and let the church say, Amen. Amen. Now I want to pray a prayer of blessing as we continue on our journey. I'm asking the Lord to bless you abundantly. I mean beyond your imagination, your wildest dreams. And I'm asking him to, for his power to work in you, to work in us this evening, to his glory and to his honor. And it's always through Christ Jesus. Now pray this prayer with me as we close as, and, I, and agree with me. 
May the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. Lord, make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. Now, if you pray this prayer, go in peace. Peace of God go with you. You pray to send us prayer. Holler at us. We want to hear from you. Go in peace. Peace of God go with you. I want you to know we love you. God loves you more. Take care.